Good morning, everybody. My name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm also the leader of Busted Knuckles, the adult recovery ministry out of Roadhouse Biker Church in San Bernardino. Hope you guys are having a great morning. We have a great devotional today. It is Book of Genesis at our very beginning. All right. But before we get started with that, let's let's just give thanks to God for another day. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with just grateful, thankful hearts, Father God, that you've blessed us with just a new day. And so, Father, today I, I pray that your word in, in, your, in your book, the book of Genesis, opens up hearts and minds and eyes, Father God, that it touches somebody. Thank you, Father, for that. And Lord, I just pray for this country. Pray for my family, my friends. I lift everyone up for just your blessings, Father God. I have friends that have special needs, and Lord, you know who I'm talking about, and you know what they are, and, and I just lift them to you, Father, for just your special attention. So, Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks. In your son's name, amen. Amen. So, we are in the book of Genesis. It's chapter 3, and I'm going to be reading, uh, it's 3, 6 through 13. And I love how this is, um, because in this, well, let me just read the scripture first, and then I'll read what actually the um, study Bible has to say. It always has great things that, that can say it so much more eloquently than I can. So we're starting in verse 6, chapter 3 of Genesis. When the woman saw that the fruit for, of the tree was good for food, and was pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. That just cracks me up. Then the man and the woman, and the man and his wife, heard the sound of the Lord God as he walked in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I, so I hid. Then he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman that you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What, have is, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So this here, I'm just going to go for it and read what it has to say, starting at, at verse 6. Satan tried to make Eve think that sin is good. It was pleasant, and it was desirable. He showed her, he asked her, you know, did he really say that you can't eat from this? Look at this tree, look at this fruit, it's beautiful. So a knowledge of both good and evil seemed harmless to her. People usually choose wrong things because they've become convinced that those things are good, at least for themselves. Our sins do not always appear ugly to us, and the pleasant sins are the hardest to avoid. Is that true? So prepare yourself for the attractive temptations that come your way. We can't always prevent temptation, but there's always a way to escape it. Use God's word and God's people to help you stand against it. So here's Eve. You know, take, you know, he he this this is what she did. She looked at that at that fruit. She took it and she ate it and then she gave some to her husband. The battle is often lost at the first look. Temptations often begin by simply seeing something that you want. So are you struggling with temptation because you have not learned that looking is the first step towards sin? You would win over temptation more often if you followed Paul's advice in 2 Timothy to run from those things that produce evil thoughts. You know, and another thing to think about this, to think about sin, because we're talking about actually the first sin. Think of a beautiful, crystal clear lake. First thing in the morning, it's like a mirror. It's smooth and clear. And then someone comes along tosses a rock out in the middle of the lake, what happens? All of a sudden you see that ripple and then it just, poof, the whole lake is filled with that ripple. That's what the sin was. First Eve took a bite, then she gave it to her husband, you know? And so 
one of the realities of sin is that its effects spread. You know, after Eve sinned, she involved Adam in her wrongdoing. When we do something wrong, we often try to relieve our guilt by involving somebody else. Kind of playing that blame game. You know, so we need to recognize and confess our sins to God before we're, t before we're tempted to bring somebody else into our wrongdoing. Amen? So, and then I, I laugh when I read where they, they saw that they were naked and they, and they put together fig leaves to cover themselves. And then they were embarrassed. They felt guilty and embarrassed. They were, they were aware that they were naked. And God asked, who, who, who told you you were naked? It's, it's, <laughs> it cracks me up to think that, you know, they heard God walking through the garden, which I think would be so cool. And because they thought Eve, unfortunately, she thought she knew better. And so she ate from that. That was that first sin. Adam did the same. And then both, all of a sudden, their eyes were open. But you know what? Doggone it. Because of that, that's that separation between them and God. They, God was in the garden. He was in the garden. It's like God's out in my front yard walking around my plants. He was in their garden. Wanted to fellowship with them. Wanted to walk with them. Ask them, how's your day going? But no, they had to eat that fruit and that put that wall of separation there. Sometimes we don't understand, and I don't, and I, I don't believe that Eve realized what that command not to eat that fruit, what it was all about. Um, where did I see that? Adam and Eve failed to heed God's warning that that was recorded in Second Genesis. Um, they didn't understand the reason for His command, so they chose to act in another way that looked better to them. We have to realize that all of the commands that God gives us, they're for our good. We may not understand them, but just know that they're for your good. That's why he just asks for obedience. Because whatever he commands us, it's for our good. We need to remember that. He, you know, He's not going to command us to do something that's not going to benefit us. It's not going to be for our good. We need to remember that, you know. And then the big one is, it's the blame game here. When God asked Adam about his sin, who do you point his finger to? The woman that you sent me, the woman that you gave me, he blamed Eve. What did Eve do? That serpent over there, he told me that I could do this. He told me. So they're playing that blame game, you know. So it's very easy for us to excuse our sins by blaming somebody else or some other circumstance, you know. We can't justify this. God knows the truth. So that's why I had to laugh that they covered themselves because of their embarrassment. God already knew exactly what happened. The minute that, that fruit was plucked from the tree, he knew exactly what happened. You know, God knows the truth and he holds each of us responsible for what we do. Amen? We are only responsible for our side of the street. We're only responsible for us. And God holds us to that. So admit your wrong attitudes, admit your actions, and apologize to God. Don't get try to get away with it. Don't try to get away with it by blaming somebody else because it's not going to happen. It's not going to go, it's not going to go well for you. Alright, so let's take a look at our life recovery devotional. It is step four, and we are day six. Are we day six? Yep, day six, and it's called Coming Out of Hiding, and again, it's Genesis 3, 6 through 13. Many of us have spent our lives in a state of hiding, ashamed of who we are inside. We may hide by living double lives, using our drug of choice to make us feel like someone else, or by self-righteously setting ourselves above others. Step four involves uncovering the things that we've been hiding, even from ourselves. After Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness, so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. The Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And he replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. And again, that's Genesis 3, and we read 6 through 13. Human beings have been covering up and hiding ever since. Ever since that first sin 
we're doing the same. We're covering up and we're hiding, thinking God won't see this. Jesus consistently confronted the religious leaders for their hypocrisy. The word hypocrite describes a person who pretends to have virtues or qualities that he really doesn't have. One time Jesus said to them, and this is in the book of Matthew 22, 23, hypocrites, for you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. First wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. And you'll find that also in Luke 11. So that's us in recovery. When we're doing this inventory, we are cleaning the inside. Okay, that's what we're doing right now. Step four is we're doing what, what Jesus told, told the, um, the, the religious leaders to do. Clean yourself up. First wash the inside of the cup, and then the outside will become clean. When the real person inside comes out of hiding, we'll have to deal with some dirt. That is true. Making this inventory is a good way to wash the inside, and some of that washing may involve bathing ourselves, or I'm sorry, may involve bathing our lives with tears, but it, it, <clears throat> but it is only by uncovering the hidden, hidden parts of ourselves that we'll be able to change the outer person, including our addictive, compulsive behaviors. So confessing our hidden parts brings healing and restoration. So you know what? Have the courage to share all that you've done, all that you do, everything, all, all of that. Have the courage to share this with him. Share this with your father, God. He wants you to do this. Don't try to hide it because it can't be done. Just remember that. Don't try to hide it with fig leaves because it's not going to happen. It can't be covered. He knows it. Honesty is going to only strengthen that relationship that you have with your God. Amen. All right, you guys have a great day today. We'll talk to you tomorrow.